Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we are doing the give a book tag. that was created by Catherine from Catherine's of Freya. I will leave her channel and original video linked down below. Um, I think this was actually created almost exactly a year ago because of the like holiday season coming up. I don't know if it was for like Thanksgiving or the winter holidays or anything like that, but it is that time of year where you want to potentially be giving thanks or giving presents to people. And so now we have the give a book tag. We're not going to be giving away books in this tag. We're going to be giving recommendations basically based on, I believe, 10 different prompts. And I'm actually excited to do this because I felt like it was also exactly the perfect tag to do this time of year. So I really love the questions. And thank you to Catherine for making this up because of the fact that like I was looking for a tag just like this to do this time of year. So that is what we're going to do. Um, I do have a huge stack of books here because I went through and picked things out beforehand. I was on top of it this time. Um, and we're going to be going through the prompts and giving book recommendations. So the first prompt is to give a book to make someone smile. And for that one, I picked I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. First of all, this cover always makes me smile. It has like the perfect combination of like bright, happy colors, but also the pose on here is just perfect. And this is a YA contemporary about a plus sized main character, a fat main character who is going into this like K-pop singing and dancing competition. And she is also bisexual. So we get some exploring of identity in here. Um, but one thing that I really, really loved about this one is that she is like unapologetic about her, her body, how she looks, how it makes her feel. Like, I just loved the sort of like body positivity of this one, as well as it being like a fun sort of rom com -y, you know, K-pop competition, almost like an American Idol sort of thing, but with the singing and dancing. Like, I really just love this one. It makes me smile, and I feel like this should make others smile as well. Number two, give a book that you don't talk a lot about. For this one, I'm picking Odd Thomas by Dean Koontz. This is a book that I feel like I've had on like a favorites list on Goodreads for forever. Like since I made my Goodreads account, because I want to say I made my Goodreads account like in 2012 or something like that. Like it's been, it's been like 10 years and I definitely read this one before then. So this has been a book that I have liked since before I made a Goodreads, um, since before I made this channel, and I definitely do not talk about this book. This is by Dean Koontz, who I feel like if you go in a bookstore, you know that you see this guy's name everywhere. And I don't read very much from this author, um, but I absolutely loved this book. It has paranormal elements, basically our main character of Thomas can see ghosts. Like I think he even sees the ghost of Elvis in this book. And because of that fact, he does sort of get roped into um, solving murders or things like that, missing persons cases if he sees the ghost. Um, I believe one of the other characters that's sort of a side character and a friend of his in here is a police chief, maybe. Um, but also, he starts to notice there are extra things around, not just ghosts. Like, there's these sort of evil entities, and when these things show up, bad things happen. And so I loved the suspense in this one, as well as the whole fact that like he can see ghosts and stuff like that. Um, I'm a sucker for that kind of trope. And so this is one that I don't mention very often. Um, it is also a movie. And I really did like the movie adaption as well. The main character is played by Anton Yelchin. Um, and I just think if you don't want to necessarily go into the book blind, you can watch that first. Or you can read this first and then watch that. I thought it was a pretty good adaption. Like, I was very happy with it. And yeah, I think about this one every so often, but I don't talk about it on my channel. Number three, give a book that you can't stop talking about. For this one, I'm picking, so far, my favorite book of the year. I have not found a book to actually top this one yet, even though I have quite a few favorites and making that list is going to be very interesting. Um, but that's going to be Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. Um, so this is a book that came out, I believe it was last year in 2021. It just took me a little while to read it. I read it within the first couple months of this year and like absolutely fell in love with this book. And so since then I have mentioned it 
a few times, um, potentially more than a few, on my channel because I just have absolutely loved it. It is the perfect mix of sci-fi romance and like mystery thriller, like literally all three of those genres are meshed in here completely. It's so hard to pick just like the main genre of the book. Um, and so I just absolutely love that. One thing I also loved is I think because it's a sci-fi, we do have like normalized queerness in this world, which is one of my favorite things, especially with sci-fi stuff. Like if we're getting to the point where we're going out in outer space, hundreds or thousands of years in the future with alien species or, you know, more progressive humans, that kind of stuff. Like I would expect to see more queerness normalized in these worlds and it for sure is in this one i just absolutely loved it um i definitely want to reread it and i have an arc of the second book which also just came out recently like i, I had to pre-order the illumicrate and matching edition for it because um yeah, i needed the pretty book on my shelf um and so yes i think this is still officially my favorite book of the year and because of that i can't shut up about it Number four, give a book that people are going to love or they are going to hate. So for this one, I am picking the All for the Game series by Nora Sokovic. So the first book is The Foxhole Court, the second book is The Raven King, and the third book is The King's Men. I have read this series multiple times. I actually bought these like dust jackets from an artist that I will leave linked down below on their Instagram and everything. They do add more of these dust jackets to, I believe, their Etsy store or something like that every so often because, um, hello, these are like absolutely gorgeous dust jackets. Like I needed them in my life, especially because like, this is the original. The original is not bad. It's just very, very simple. Um, this is a self-published indie series that is very, I don't want to say necessarily controversial, um, but it is very different. It is very dark. And a lot of the times what you hear is this is like a male, male romance series. And it is not. If you're looking for romance, it doesn't really start until maybe the end-ish of two, but there is some of that in three. Um, but this does have like mafia and gangsters and like very much abusive situations. There are probably a ton of trigger and content warnings and I believe there are um, some on the author's website, although you can probably find them in some reviews on Goodreads and stuff as well. Like it can get very, very dark. And it is also like a sports series um with a made-up sport like i find sports to not be my thing uh and even though they do get into some details on how this sport works and everything maybe because it is not a real one like it is sort of interesting and it is woven in with everything else about the story as well um uh, it's basically about our main character of neil who is sort of hiding and on the run from these mob and gangster sort of people and ends up finding this team at this college to join and it's like a found family story but like I said it gets very very dark and I think because it is self-published it's not necessarily the best edited um although I am trash for it like I devoured these um the first time I read it and every subsequent time since I've been wanting to reread them as well just because they are very very quick to get through but you do need to know what you're getting into when you start reading them and because of that I do think you're either going to love them or you're going to hate them because that's sort of where I see people fall on this series you either really really love everything that happened couldn't put them down or you hated them or at least the first one potentially and then decided to DNF everything. Like you're just like, no thanks. So yeah, it is very, very polarizing. Number five, give a book to someone who needs to get in their feels. So for this one, I'm picking one of the books that definitely made me have feels um, this year, which is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This is my new Illumicrate edition of this because I um, definitely was a sucker and bought very pretty, pretty books. But can you blame me? Because I gave five stars to this book and this is a sapphic romance i love the fact that there is a sort of like sci-fi fantasy magical sort of element to it even though it is mostly a contemporary romance i love the fact that we do also have a group of friends in here um i love when we have romances that aren't just focused on like the main couple and we get to see like the lives of the people in this story um but i cried 
with this book. Like 100%, I think I finished it late at night after the kids had gone to sleep. I was like, I need to finish this book. I think my husband was asleep too. Like I was the only one awake in my room and I cried. <laughs> I cried with this book. It was so, so good. Um, there were good feelings. There were sad feelings. Like I just, like this book was so, so amazing. Like I have a lot of feelings about both this book and Red, White, and Royal Blue. Like I loved both of them so, so much. But I feel like this is the one that gave me more feels than that one. Although it's been a little while since I read that one. Um, but yeah, if you want some good sapphic romance, lots of feels, I think this is the one. Um, it's obviously not necessarily going to be this like pretty, pretty edition. Um, but yeah, I loved it so much. I had to buy this one. And I think definitely more people should read it. Number six, give a book with immaculate vibes. So this is the one that's apparently up for the most interpretation, whatever you feel like immaculate vibes are. And so for this one, I picked Iron Widow by Shiran J. Zhao. This was my favorite book of last year, like 100% five out of five stars. I am not so patiently waiting for the sequel to come out because I just love this one so much. And I feel like the vibes that are coming with this is mostly related to the fact that this is a story that is based maybe not based. It's taking historical figures from China and putting them into a sci-fi setting. And it's sort of like a present day slash futuristic setting. It is sci-fi. There are like giant mechas. There are, I think, aliens that they're fighting as well. Like there's a whole lot of stuff going on. But the vibes of this one, the way it made me feel like the entire time, like that was the most important thing for me was just that the vibes of it. I absolutely love this one. I love the cover and everything of this too. Like ugh, our main character I think is like one of my favorite parts, but yes, this was holy vibes. Number seven, give a book for someone who likes to be surprised. So when I read this question, I immediately went to like mystery, thriller, horror type of stuff. And the author that popped up for me that I knew I had to talk about was going to be Riley Sager because these are some of my favorite like mystery thriller books and I feel like part of that reason is because the endings are always so surprising. The plot twists for pretty much all of these books I feel like hit it out of the park and I'm currently holding Home Before Dark because I think this is still my favorite of his books. Lock Every Door was a very, very, very close second because I gave both of these books five out of five stars. I have not read his newest one, The House Across the Lake, um, but I own it and I definitely need to get to it. Hopefully this year, we'll see if I can do that. Um, but yeah, the actual like plot twists and how things add up is always surprising. Like I don't think I've ever been able to predict the actual ending to any of his books. And this one I think had the most like horror vibes, not just strictly mystery thriller, um, especially since this is supposed to be dealing with like a haunted house. Our main character is going back home after her father has passed away and trying to figure out if the book that he wrote about their house being haunted was true or not. Um, and so I loved this one so, so much. I love this cover too. Um, but yeah, I think his books especially fit this question. Number eight, give a book for someone who needs a little love. And so again, the first book that popped up for this one is one of my most recent reads and it's Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. So this book in general, I think it's just one of those things where it's a slower moving story. Um, it takes place actually after our main character has died and he's going to this tea shop and sort of coming to terms with death and humanity and all this kind of stuff. And because of that, there are a lot of good conversations about what it means to be human and what it means to be a good person and all that kind of stuff. And I just absolutely loved how beautifully written this was. I will also say it starts off with our main character being an absolute asshole and you're like, how is this book going to actually get better? Um, but this is like a great character study, character growth, character progression. But by the end, I loved our main character. I love the story as a whole. And yes, I do think it's going to definitely be something that should make people feel better about themselves uh, and just sort of have that like sort of happy, content vibe with it. Um, this is another really, really pretty 
a Lumicrate one because obviously we can tell that if I like a book, um, I'm going to be buying the Pretty Editions. Although this one, I bought the Pretty Edition first and then fell in love with it. So I'm happy about that. Number nine, give a book that is an old favorite. So I want to say one of the oldest books that I love is Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. This is a book that I read sometime in like elementary school. I actually don't remember when, but I remember absolutely loving it. This is a series as well that I think has like eight-ish books in it. <laughs> I've definitely read the first three or four and I want to reread those eventually to continue with the series because I loved it so, so much. I think most people know about Anne of Green Gables, like it follows an orphan named Anne, who ends up going and living with the Cuthberts, and she's a girl. Um, they wanted a boy to help with the farm, but they did end up deciding to keep her, and it's like her antics and her growing up, like each book takes us further in time in the story. Um, there have been many TV and like movies made for TV adaptions, and I've loved every single one of them. Like I just absolutely love this book and everything and so because of that i actually have like three different editions of just like the first book in the series because like again sucker for pretty books of things that i love and i have always loved and of green gables like i don't even remember how old i was when i first read it that's how long ago it was and then number 10 give a book that you think everyone should read and for this one i'm going with amari and the night brothers by bb alston this is a middle grade and i'm picking that because i do feel like a lot more people need to read middle grade especially middle grade fantasy they are such fun stories and because they're middle grade it's a very easy age group for so many people to read and this was another book that was one of my favorites of last year i have the sequel that i need to read and i just haven't done it yet but this is basically like a fantasy sort of men in black in the fact that we have a fantasy world that lives in tandem with our world but like only certain people can see it um and this is going to be following our main character of amari whose brother has basically gone missing and in order to sort of figure out what has happened with him she has to go into this world where she can see these fantasy creatures and magic and you know stuff like that and she's gonna have to take some tests and trials which is one of my favorite tropes in books like magical competitions tests trials ah it's amazing but she has to do this in order to get into the society and then find her brother and I absolutely love this first book five out of five stars like I am so ready for the second but I haven't picked it up don't ask me why I, I don't have a good reason um, but I definitely loved this one and I think because of the content and how much fun it is and the fact that it's a middle grade so many people need to pick this up like everybody should be reading this book and so those are all 10 questions from the give a book tag um, I don't know who has done this or who has not done this so feel free to be tagged if you would like to do this video um, and I just like I said before absolutely loved these questions that Catherine came up with because they are perfect for book recommendations and to give a book to people um, around this time of year. So that is going to be it from me. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up to let me know. Subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos. I do have videos up currently on Thursdays, so I will see you then. Bye!